good evening to you all. Thank you very much, uh, BSS, for this invite. So this 64-year-old female with uh, untreated adolescent Oedipus scoliosis presented to me around uh, 11 years ago with intractable back and leg pain and significant difficulty in activities of uh, daily living. At that point of time, we went ahead and did her uh, correction of deformity along with facetectomies and uh, intradiscal releases. And this was her post-op X-ray. She's on follow with me and uh, present developed this after nine years. She has not undergone a revision. She still comes to me. She's quite happy and almost independent at uh, around uh, 75 now. Compared to this patient who was again uh, in her uh, uh, 70s, came with this uh, coronal and sagittal uh, malalignment with significant back and leg pain, where uh, I, then I went ahead and did this uh, uh, T4 to S2AI fixation with uh, again endoriscal releases, facetectomies, and I thought I did a good job. She is very well balanced. She comes to me every year and is extremely unhappy with the surgeon. I don't know what went wrong. So this puts a question. In adult spinal deformity, when to say no? So at the outset, let me uh, uh, declare, I really don't have an answer. It's my perspective of this question, uh, individual opinions, across the nation or across the world might change. So we have to consider multiple domains when we come to this situation. The most important is the patient domain. Look at the deformity domain, the economical domain, which is of utmost importance for us because these are people who might or might not have a medical insurance or even if they have them, it might not cover their complete cost of treatment along with post-op uh, family and social support, which is equally important in the Indian perspective. And most important, the treatment expectations from the patient. So what exactly is our perspective or uh, our look on this? So in these situations, we have our decisions can essentially be data driven. Now, when we look at these data, essentially from the Western or the Eastern world, and they might not really parallel our uh, expectations of patient uh, population and or we could have our own personal data or it could be kind of level five evidence. And most important, the willingness to accept a, a, a revision surgery and the patient's expectation from the surgery. So there should not be a mismatch between what you offer one, what the patient wants and a lot depends upon your practice settings. Are you doing an institutional practice? Are you doing a group practice? Are you a one-man show? And what is your uh, support systems in your practice? A lot of this decides as to what you do. This is another very pertinent question which ask I ask myself, or you should ask yourself, who will benefit from the surgery? Is it the patient? Is it the family of the patient? It's not very uncommon to have a family, a kind of nuclear family where the, the earning members goes to uh, work or they essentially want the patient to be ready as much independent as possible. You should be very uh, careful and cautious when you take up these patients because they really might not be wanting surgery. Or is it the surgeon and the team for obvious reasons? Are you really keen on doing it? Do you want to make that buck because of doing a deformity surgery? Trust me, it is not worthwhile if it is for making the buck. And or is it to uh, get data or is it to support science? So on the deformity domain, we all know this, that how our the, the spine ages and what happens in the 50s and how we end up in. And this classic paper uh, from the ISSG, which said that the deformity is not the driver in these, in these uh, elderly patients, it is the pain, whereas the deformity is a driver for a disease surgical decision in a, in a adorosal scoliosis. And these data that uh, uh, beach and spines may progress at the rate of three degrees per year 
whereas which is not the case in case with the adolescent spines. Now, when we come to this, this should uh, come to a notice that look at the extreme amount of complications up to 40%, meaning around uh, one in, in, in one in three of your patients will end up with a complication because of deformity surgery. Is it really worthwhile to go for it? These are the spectrum of disorders which we uh, think when you think about adult deformity, a degen kyphosis or scoliosis, and exactly what are we treating? Most of them have got genotic symptoms, of 50% of them have got back pain, and a vast of them have got a curve, curve of around 30 degrees. Most of them have got lateral lithosis. Uh, around half of them have got a flat back, and a lot of them have got cycle imbalance. So we are trying to uh, tackle each of these when we think about treating this deformity, the central and foramen stenosis, along with the extra foramen stenosis, and the sagittal de deformity and the curve angle. Now, the patient and the family domain. So we make sure that we have multiple visits. We should get to know the family and the person as to why they really have to undergo surgery. It's not uncommon for me to see a patient who wants to undergo surgery because they want to have their kids who are who live abroad with them. And the only way to get them is to have a surgery or something major. And I really had one of the patient who was not getting better after the best of my efforts. And I know that she wanted her son to be here who was not living in the country. So beware of that. And you should check them through this vast uh, preoperative optimization. And we have a peer support group where we have a collection of patients who undergo surgery and uh, they talk to each other. I get them to see these people and let, let them explain that do they really need the surgery or are they happy about it? So we all know about the Seattle Spine Protocol, which we follow in our institute. And we strictly have this uh, NSQ surgical risk calculator which once you select tells us exactly as to what to go through, what are the percentages, you can know, when you, it makes sense when you talk to these patients as to what are your expected risk of cardiac complication, your expected hospital stay, return or readmission, pneumonia, et cetera. So I use this effectively to speak about my uh, complication possibly in a particular patient. This tells you your patient's particular risk compared with the average risk and what are the chances of outcome. So it's, it's a, a lot useful to use this tool in your practice. It's a few, uh, it's a free web-based uh, tool. And when it comes to deformity domain, I use the 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 MSDF by uh, Bumanini, the ISSG group, as to how I make a decision as to what to do, which class of deformity I follow. will not go into the details because that is not the purview of this presentation. And I have, uh, when and whenever possible, I try and use Minimal invasive techniques uh, in deformity corrections in adults could be uh, a lift, D lift, X lift, combined, hybrid, staged, as and when the case demands. Because of that, I have went, gone over from these huge incisions to uh, whenever possible to these uh, small and uh, minimal invasive incisions, which might be either staged or single setting, as and when the case uh, might demand. Why did I go over to that? Because we know that there's enough data again from the ISHT, which tells that there is a significant reduction of post-op complication rate from 30%, from 60% to 30% when we have gone over to MIS techniques or hybrid techniques as compared to open. And we also uh, know that they've got lesser blood loss and less hospital stay. So to conclude, uh, I will uh, say that adult deformity is a real challenge. Be very sure whom you are treating. Are you treating the patient's mind or the patient or the family? Set out your goals very well. Be very clear as to what you what to expect. Whenever possible, minimal minimal surgery is a very attractive option option in these subset of patients. And I think you should get familiar with it and try and use it more often in your practice because they've got significant post-operative uh, decreased complication rate. And in that, I followed the ISSC guidelines today. We have the MSDF2 by Dr. Mamanini and team. And limited surgery is attractive too. Today, if you ask me after uh, 15 years of adult deformative practice, I try and do whenever possible into uh, limited surgery because that is more uh, long lasting as for me. And if attempting uh, a minimum invasive, you should arm yourself with all these uh, uh, navigation, BMP, etc. Be very careful in patient counseling. Exactly know who you are treating, whom you are treating, and be very clear and uh, uh, transparent in telling no. And believe me, the revision is a truth. Thank you for your patient listening. 